Dear students, welcome to Geography class. Today we are going to see the third and final session of the first chapter that is representation of geographical features. In this session, we are going to see the important physical features. You might wonder why we can't deal with physical features when we say about the representation and map and globe and so on. But I would say this is an introduction to the world of topography. Here you are going to deal with a few important physical features. The detailed studies will be there in the higher classes. So let's begin the lesson. Geographical features. As the first geographical feature, we are going to deal with river. We are so familiar with this concept, river. What do you mean by a river? Here is the definition. It's a natural flow of water, usually in a definite channel, moving down from mountains or hills towards a sea, lake or inland basin. So this is what river is. It's a natural flow of water through a particular channel. We are so familiar with this concept because we have seen river many times or we many of us live near to the river that is in the river bank so here is example our next concept is meanders when a river flows across a gentle slope so if it is a gentle slope then river cannot have the extreme flow or a great speed of a flow but rather it it flows very gently right so it allows or it causes the river to flow slowly in a zigzag manner which forms broad sweeping curves or loops and these are called meanders I'll show an example for you. So this region, see, here it is a very gentle slope. This river flows in very gentle slope and this region is called meander. See the river is flowing in a zigzag manner, right? Forming, forming broad sweeping curves or loops. So this is what a meander is. So I hope this concept is clear. Our next concept or geographical feature is tributary. Tributary. So where from these rivers come? It has got an origin, right? Many small streams join together to form a big river. So here is definition of tributaries. Streams or small rivers flowing into a larger river are called tributaries. Here is an example. See there are two streams come together to form a larger river. This is what the tributaries are. I hope this concept is very clear to you. Next one is distributaries. What do you mean by distributaries? Tributaries means uh, many streams comes together or come together to form a larger river, right? But the distributaries, the big river, when it reaches to the uh, sea, it cannot contain all the water to flow in a particular channel at a time. So it takes many narrow streams to reach to the sea. That's what distributaries are. See, here is an explanation. As a river moves towards the sea, many tributaries join it, thus increasing its volume. It becomes very slow and is unable to carry its entire volume of water in a single channel. Hence, it splits into several small channels that are called 
distributaries. I have a picture for you. See, a big river comes and flows in a different narrow channels and join the, joins the sea. I have this concept is clear and let's move to the next concept called Delta. All the sediments which are carried by a river are deposited near to the sea. That is called the mouth of the sea. And it gives rise to a form of a land, a, a platform of land, almost in a triangular shape. So that triangular shaped region which contains a lot of sediments uh, or silt is called delta. Such a region near the mouth of a river with a network of distributaries is called delta. I have a picture for you. See the big sea, a big river is coming and nearby there are lots of uh, canals, uh, channels of um, uh, that, that, that we call as a distributaries go to delta, a region of delta. See here, this part is called delta. I guess you understand this. Fold mountains. Before we go deeper into this concept called fold mountains, we need to know that there are different layers of the earth core mantle and finally the crust so the small pieces of the crust is called tectonic plates these tectonic plates move but it is not visible for the, our bare eyes but the results can be visible a big and best example for this movement is our continent. The continents are made or it is made through the movements. It is the result of the movements of the tectonic plates. So another result of this movement is fold mountain. So let's go to the explanation huge amount of sediments are deposited by the river rivers on the seabed forming horizontal layers sediments we have already heard that the sediments carried by rivers from the mountains or uh, from the beginning this would be deposited uh, in the bed of a sea and what what do they do or what what happened to them when two lithospheric plates, that's what tectonic plates, move towards each other, towards each other, these layers of sediments are compressed from both slides and are folded. So this is compressed and slides and form a kind of mountains. That's what we can't see. See, gradually they get uplifted and form fold mountains so this is a simple concept there are movements on crust of uh, tectonic plates and due to these movements more movements towards each other these sediments deposited can cause an upliftment and that due to that action fold mountains are being formed i have now this concept is clear now let's see something related to that anticline and syncline anticline and syncline what do you mean by anticline in fold mountains the upward folds are called anticlines i've said upward movements are called anticline while the downward folds are called synclines they normally occur together. So when the, something is going up, definitely something should go down, right? The other part should go down. So here is the picture. You will understand what is anticline and syncline. So the direction is given here, how these tectonic movements take place. Have a glance at this picture. 
Now we move to another tectonic movement. This is this is a result of another tectonic movement. Uh, we have already seen about the tectonic movement uh, coming towards each other. What would happen if it is moving apart from each other? Let's see what will happen. When two lithospheric plates move away from each other, cracks or fault occur in the earth crust and the horizontal layers of the rock breaks break faulting down into several blocks. These blocks either get uplifted or subside along the plane of fault. The uplifted blocks are called block mountains and the subsided blocks are called rift valleys. Here something is coming once the tectonic movement takes place away from each other. So faulting occurs there. Faulting means the breaking down of the rocks and form a special kind of a uh, physical feature that is called block mountains. I'll show the picture over here. See, it looks like blocks, different blocks of a uh, mountains. That's why it's called block mountains. Here it is horset. Horset means the up, uppermost part of a block mountain is called horset. So here is here the movement of a tectonic plates is away from each other. So block mountains happen. So mainly these are the concept which we are supposed to deal by this chapter. This is a simple an introduction to the world of topography. I would say just read all uh, these concepts once again along with the slides and just learn the important points. So we have already uploaded the question and answer. You need to write it down and learn them and be safe at home. We will see in the next video with a new chapter. Thank you.